does the type of nutrients that we eat affect liver fat or is it simply a game of calories and energy? I think it is calories, energy and quality. So it's not micronutrients. So you said earlier about like, um, I think we touched upon it, right? A high carb, high fat diets, you know, there is fat diets out there. Right? These diets may have a faster, more pronounced effect in like six months, but after a year or two, you go back. So a more balanced diet is the one that has a more pronounced effect over time. And a more balanced diet, if you come from the Mediterranean area, is the Mediterranean type of diet. If you are in America, it's a modified Mediterranean diet. We call it DASH. Or, so a more balanced diet. This is what, um, in terms of macronutrients. What we have also found is that um, the quality of the diet is also important. So people are familiar with respect to the quality of the diet um, for diabetes or cardiovascular disease. And we see exactly the same for fatty liver disease. Okay? And that's independent of calories? Independent of calories. So level one is um, calories. Never uh, Level two is thinking about um, patterns of diet, right? not individual foods but patterns of diet right so more um, uh, less animal fat more fruits and vegetables right less sugar less uh, saturated fat right uh, and all this with olive oil with antioxidants and polyphenols right um, so this is uh, more fish less uh, red meat right so this is patterns of diet and we characterize them as mediterranean type or or dash, dash diet but even each and every vegetable oil is not the same. You know, each and every, say, fruit intake is not the same. So it's not the same to eat an orange, to drink orange juice, or to, to drink canned orange juice that has been processed. And, right? and we know this from epidemiology studies. We have done several studies. The quality of the diet is also important. Right, so within that dietary pattern and selection of foods, trying to focus as much as possible to uh, un unprocessed or minimally processed foods. Are there any specific uh, nutrients outside of macronutrients, whether it's micronutrients or supplements that are supported by any level of evidence for, for yes, supporting is, liver mm -hmm. health? Yeah, so we'll see more and more in, in the future, but uh, the best supported vitamin at this point for fatty liver disease is vitamin E, which is um, an antioxidant. And since we were talking about inflammation, it makes sense. It has been studied in observational studies, but also in interventional studies, randomized placebo control trials, animals and humans up to two years. If you give 800 units of vitamin E, um, it works very well. Daily. Daily. It works very well for fatty liver disease if you do not have diabetes. Now, why is that? <laughs> the explanation I give, uh, Simon, is that if you start having diabetes or cardiovascular disease, the inflammation level is so high that the vitamin is not enough to control it. But if you are in early phases, right, before you develop, you're insulin resistant, you have a metabolic problem, but not fully blown diabetes, it's early enough for a vitamin like vitamin E, an antioxidant, to control the problem. Mm -hmm. What percentage of people with type 2 diabetes would have fatty liver? Ooh, this is a very good question. And you will be surprised. 70% in America, 7 0. And we did not know anything about it until recently. So people would come to our clinics and we would not even test. And so fatty liver, I they would go assume, together. Would, often, would, it, would that often precede type 2 diabetes? They go together. It depends on your genetics. Sometimes it does precede type 2 diabetes most of the time. Other times, if you are more prone to develop diabetes, it's the same process as I told you earlier. So they go together hand in hand. And guess what? Hypertension and cardiovascular disease, 
So they're all kids on the same block. Let's put it this way, right? right. They go together. So if you, if, if you are diagnosed today with type 2 diabetes, you need to be tested for fatty liver disease. Until like last year or two years ago, we did not know that. And if I was diagnosing someone with type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease, I would bet this person has a certain degree of cardiovascular disease. Why does increasing fat levels in the liver cause insulin resistance? Or what's the relationship between the fat in the liver and insulin resistance? Well, it's a vicious cycle, right? So the more insulin resistance you have, the more fat you produce, right? And the more fat you produce, um, there is certain bad fats, right? If we can call it this, right? That go in, inside the cell, right? And create insulin resistance. So with for the same amount of insulin, when insulin binds to its receptor, there is certain molecules that create insulin resistance intracellularly. So it's it's a vicious cycle. And those are fat? Uh, some of these are fatty acids. So there is some fatty acids that are protective, and there is others that are worsening the problem. And are they fatty acids that come in through our diet, or are they fatty acids Both. our body makes? Both. Both. Right? They come from the, from the diet, but also... Um, our body makes certain uh, uh, fatty acids that when they exceed a certain level, they get deposited in the wrong tissues and they create insulin resistance. So there is a lot about beneficial and bad fats um, uh, written in the literature, like ceramides or uh, sphincomyelins. So in the ratio of, of the two, yeah. Yeah, is, is that why there is this kind of general recommendation for reducing saturated fat and having more polyunsaturated fats. Yes. Yeah, that comes back to that. So olive oil, for example, is, is less saturated fat in addition to the polyphenols and antioxidants we talked about, right? It's the two, the two pathways. Right, so, so if you were comparing, say, olive oil to butter, Exactly. You would expect butter to increase liver fat exactly. more. Exactly, more. In a, in a to, to create more insulin resistance sooner. Let's put it this way. Interesting. And that is more of a problem if you're in a calorie uh, surplus than at sort of weight of maintenance course. or both? Because, of course, because if you think about it, right, uh, butter was much more uh, frequently used in northern European nations, right? And people did not have the heat did not have, right, um, they were living in cold environments and they were doing a lot of labor. They needed it. That's why if you went to a restaurant, right, or, or a tavern, right, in northern Germany, like 100 years ago, they needed it on their table. But today we don't need it. We need to replace it with olive oil. People who were living in the Mediterranean area, they were using olive oil. I mean, this is, in a way, selection, right? Over centuries, people did not know science. They knew what was working, and they were picking it. Th does it make sense what I'm telling you? It's natural selection, right? Am I confusing you? Or? No, it makes sense. It makes I'm sense, following. Right? Yeah. Um, but I guess the, the, the main take-home point there is that the type of fat you eat matters. It probably matters more if you're eating in a calorie surplus than if you're eating in a deficit. You yes, can get because away you with will a burn it. You, you will burn it. You'll burn it. If you if you need the energy, you will burn it. Right. right? You will burn the butter. Yeah. That's that's the idea. Yeah. Got you. But in today's environment, where there's an abundance of calories and most, you are people, not going to burn it. You are going to store it, and it's going to have consequences. Right.